and hello good evening and welcome again to the stream so this is our second episode and it seems since our ep episode a little yesterday we have actually well managed to lose our cows so here I am again in the MiG-19 Farmer V uh, just leaning forward, forward on the dashboard and First of all, uh, for those of you who know, do know who I am, do not know who I am, I am Buggy Bear and I am a very big aviation enthusiast, among other things. I also do stream other video games, but since the MiG-19 came out and I think Razban managed to make me fall in love with it just a little bit, I'm going to be, going to be doing several videos with it. This one actually will cover navigation and we will try to fly a circuit, combat air patrol circuit. With the plane. Uh, the plane here is here on the ramp at the Kobulati uh, Air Base in the Georgian so uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. Since this is MiG-19, this is during the Cold War, so I, I thought the theme would be appropriate. So our plane itself is uh, outfitted with, as you can see here, uh, two K-13 air to air missiles, or if you know them under the Blue Force name, they are the AA-2 Adols. I'm also using this uh, snow camouflage because, you know, this is called a farmer and this kind of reminds me of a uh, cow, so uh, I think this is appropriate. We also have two 750 liter fuel tanks. Apologies, I need to adjust my glasses a little bit. Um, and that's about it. We also are on a full fuel load and we also have loaded 300 rounds, 150 rounds per gun of anti-tank high explosive rounds. These are 30 millimeter rounds. So that's pretty much our uh, loadout. Well, it's me, me, basically the primary pilot and my wingman who is right over here. I call him Ivan. Hello, Ivan. Um, Ivan is going to be our Basically wingman. So without further ado, I think we, it's time that we actually proceed with the startup. But I'm actually going to go through quite a bit of detail this time. And I'm going to start with the manual that uh, Rasbem so kindly provided for us. Uh, my, my cockpit is in English because I don't really understand the Cyrillic alphabet. Of course, I could be able to learn the controls over time, but I'd rather use the English cockpit. Because, well, deep inside I'm a dirty capitalist, but again, I guess the East has its charming way of luring us pilots in with beautiful airplanes. So, without further ado, I think we can actually carry out an inspection. Now, I can't really do a walk around, but I can actually tell you what we could do to make this uh, uh, more realistic. So, we have to perform an aircraft inspection. We're going to start on the starboard side my mouse if i switch my mouse it's going to fly to the other screen so that's not exactly kosher so what we're going to do we're going to start walking around the aircraft starboard to port side and inspect it what we would need to check of course uh we would need to check the fuselage for um serviceability so are they damaged do they have scratches do they have uh wear and tear um, next, of course, would be going toward the long, uh, engine, uh, blanking covers and landing gears, locks. We, do, we need to see if the nose landing gear locks have been removed. And as we go down past the landing gear, of course, we would need to check the wheel wells and the sides of the fuselage, especially the riveted joints for oil, hydraulic fluid or fuel leaks. We have a central fuel tank and I think some fuel in the wings, so that's something we need to pay attention to. As we get to the main landing gear, of course, we need to check it for uh, leaks and possible hydraulic pipe breakage and so on. Uh, the fuel, external fuel tanks as well, and we need to verify that the missiles have been safely installed on the aircraft by the ground crew. Most likely they have been, but you should always do that. Uh, next, we're going to check the flaps and ailerons on the wings. Uh, we need to check them, to, uh, basically we don't have any visible damage. And finally we need to check the, the stabilizer flaps are not in asymmetric position. 
Finally, we would like to check if the drag chute compartment, which is the little bulge under the two engines, is in order. And finally, before we move on to the uh, starboard side of the plane, so we went nose, port, starboard, uh, port, around, and to the starboard side, we need to check that the engine nozzles, I'm actually going to try to zoom in here, are actually open while we move into the other access doors and panels and verify again for damage, leaks, and we also want to verify that the uh, air data probes are removed. Finally, we're going to fish, finish with the flaps and ailerons on the starboard wing, the fuel tanks and a missile, and finally the uh, main landing gear on the starboard side. And we should pretty much be in order. Uh, also, of course, all the caps and remove before flight strips would have to be removed. I don't know if the Soviet Air Force used such things, but regardless, those need to be verified. So, assuming the plane is in serviceable condition, we are actually going to go inside and see what the hell is going on with our airplane. So, excuse me a minute while I put on the other monitor here. Uh, so, let's see. So, regardless, uh, what we need to do is, again, to start up. Uh, but before we start up, we need to perform a cockpit inspection. So, I, I have the checklist on my other monitor. I would actually like to print it because it's... I guess, I think it's handier for me to actually uh, have it printed out. But anyway, so we'll start with the cockpit inspection and we're going to scroll down as needed. So, landing gear, uh, lever, neutral position. The uh, blocking latch is on, so that's good. Circuit breakers, now here are the circuit breakers. We can actually open this little panel here and verify that they're all on. Up is in the on position, so let's close and lock this up. Finally, on the right-hand side panel, we have here some engines we need to look at. So, these are the left hand, right hand military power and afterburner switches. Let's see if I remember where they are. Now, I haven't really read much through the manual. This is the emergency switches. Apparently it's on the right hand side panel, but I'm not remembering where they are. Uh, the only thing I haven't been able to do so far is I wasn't able to activate the afterburners at all. These are just the lamps. So, but on the right hand side, they should be there. I should have really read a bit more through the manual, but I haven't. I just got a bit too excited, as I usually do. So let's see, where are those switches? Of course, so guys, you can be my backseat pilots and actually help me out. I don't see any switches here, probably. Well, I don't think they were here. I, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Razbam would actually include them if they were there, but it's on the right-hand side panel. Anyway, so those are the emergency uh, mill power disconnect for each engine. And finally, oil cut-off valves. They are here. Alright. Ah, it's those. Okay. And the lack let and 
LH side. Why is this LH side? Well, I don't know why it's written. I usually understand left and right in a different manner. But anyway, so we need to verify that the cockpit pressurization is in the open position. And the cockpit pressurization lever is fully forward. Um, of course, there should be a cockpit checkup for foreign objects and all sorts of damage, but since this is a simulator, probably that will not exactly happen. Of course, it should be a che checkup also for water and ice, but that's about it. And uh, the oxygen pressure, let's see here. It should be 130 to 150 uh, kilograms per cubic centimeter, which I guess is in order. Pneumatic systems, so main pneumatic system, yeah, that's good. It should be between 130 and 150 kilograms per cubic centimeter. Landing gear emergency is at 50, which is the switch here. Flaps emergency, so this is the flaps emergency. I haven't connected the ground power yet. Uh, the clock has been set correctly. It's about uh, 8.13 local time. Uh, the barometric altimeter, we need to set it to zero, so we actually get the correct altitude reading. Engine throttles, we need to move them to their operating position, so the engine throttles are here. I'm going to move the left and the right, and we need to verify that there's no obstructions, so the engine, the engine throttles can go completely forward. I'm going to put them back to their uh, idle cutoff position. Uh, the braking system, so this is the braking system is actually here. So the lever functions correctly, and the ARU switch is right here beneath the throttle. I never really see it. Yep, this is automatic. The aileron booster should be in the on position. Yep, the actuators are on. And this is the aileron trimmer switch for left and right. On the right hand side panel, okay, we need to actually, we need to set this to auto and this to mix. This is for the oxygen. And the aircraft, all right, and since, okay, let's put on the battery power. Okay, and let's also talk to the guys on the ground. They're going to set our um, ground electric power on for us. Alright. Alright, excellent. So now that we put on the battery on, we actually have a 28 volt electrical power in the plane. We have these lights here that you can see. I'll try to move in so you can actually see them better. Generated, disconnected, oil pressure, and I don't remember what this is. Hydraulic system off. So that's. Those are on. Those should be on. Uh, the landing gear flaps, every PPS position panel is, let's see, it's correct because the flaps are not dropped and we can perform a light test. There was a switch here for a light test. Let's see if I remember what it was. Yeah, there it is. I had forgotten where it was. Okay, we know that the lights are working, so everything's in order. So that's the 
PPS panel. Now we're going to turn on the fuel tank. So tank one, two, three, and four. Well, they were not in order, but you understand what I need to do. Uh, on the left hand side, lamp control test. Yep, they illuminate. On the main instrument panel, a fuel uh, quantity indicator, which is here, 1,400 liters plus our external tanks should be on, should not be on, apologies. And we're going to open our in-flight relight engine systems. See if I can get in a good position so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, so we need to go for the radio switches here. Emergency arc radio, emergency arc radio, and... Okay, radio power switch and the beacon lights are already on. Let's talk to the tower and let's actually request startup. And Ivan is already starting his plane, but he will not take off before we do. And let's set our radar altimeter. This is the radar altimeter setting knob. It's not here where it should be, it's here. So let's set it to 200 meters. And here we need to turn on the aileron trim. And now we're going to align I needed to shut that guy off, his engines are a bit too noisy, so the cockpit is locked. So I'm going to engage the GIK-1 radio navigation system and I'm going to align our ADI. And I've already set the engine starter to on. And we don't need the electric uh, emergency electrical power. Okay. Fire extinguisher switch is already on, so we're going to engine start system, let's connect the two generators, so basically when the engines have started this will close the circuit and we move, we're going to move the left throttle in the idle position so I'm gonna bother you with the startup procedure as well because well it's nice to know about it I'm gonna open this cover here, this is very similar to the MiG-21 by the way so you just push a button and you can see the RPM to the right corner of my view actually increasing I'm letting go of the switch generator button is off and it takes about 80 seconds for the engine as far as I know to reach full power but it will eventually do it And it will stop just about there. Okay, the radio navigation system is now... Okay, if we check our current heading... It's 339, so it's exactly what we see here. So the navigation system is aligned. Now, um, engine EGT should be 750 degrees. 
let's see. Ah, so so six fifty. Well, anyway, it's on this side. The engine EGT. Uh, oil warning lap uh, is off as soon as the engine reaches 4,000 RPM, so we have to wait for it. Now the engine is light is off. Uh, the, the left generator has connected, and I'm going to close this cover so I don't accidentally bump into the thing. I'm actually going to ask the ground crew to turn off the ground power because we, we can actually use the other engine. to start the second one and I am going to play, play uh, do the same for the second engine there we go, we are going to start the second engine and our RPM is coming up okay we need to check yeah, it's clear around the plane Uh, this oil um, oil uh, lamp will actually go off. The generator kicked in, but when the engine reaches 4,000 RPM, then we can actually uh, see the light go off. In the meantime, I'm actually going to activate our navigation, our ADF. And it was, I do have here, the ADF I know for this airport is 870 kilohertz, so I'm going to set this to on. And we're not going to power the guns. Uh, we won't be fighting anybody. We just need to find some missing cows. That's the whole purpose of this mission. So we're going to set this to 870 kilohertz. Because we need to actually find our way home. This is very similar to the MiG-15's ADF again. I've said that before. I think the ARC-5 is also present on uh, on the MiG-15, I don't remember exactly, but I know it has an ADF. Of course I could tune this in flight, but I'm just going to tune it now, so it's... Done. So guys, how's it going? You're just quiet and just watching my stream, but nobody's saying a damn thing. That's 900 mega kilohertz. There we go, 8, 870. Okay, ADF is tuned. Uh, all our warning laps have gone off, so the plane has been successfully started. We've closed the covers and we're not going to activate the radar system. Uh, finally, we, we already have disconnected the ground power and started the second engine, so I went a bit ahead. Uh, we're going to set the flaps to reset and to take off position. We get the light here that the flaps are deployed. So we actually know we're, we've, we've deployed the flaps. We can also, of course, ask the ground crew, ground crew to check the flaps for us. We can't really see the flaps because of this sweeped wing, so it's a bit difficult. But the flaps are now in takeoff position. 
All right, uh, we are going to ask our, we're going to perform a few tests. So I'm going to connect the nose gear brake system. I'm going to have the crew remove the wheel shocks. And I'm going to advance the throttles to about 11,000 RPM. There we go. Brakes are holding and we're going to return to idle power. I'm going to disconnect the throttles now uh, on my uh, HOTAS and I'm going to perform engine tests for, for the military power. So I'm going to activate the military power. I will hold the brakes again and go for left engine. Okay, there we go. Military power lights went on. The AB light that you saw on the a panel where the oil lamps used to be, so that's where the military power is. I'm going to let this reach idle, and I'm going to perform a test for the other other engine. There's the light, there's the afterburner, and I'm going to set it to zero again. EGT seem to be staying within normal parameters, so about 680 degrees. And the engine's almost idle, so I can release the brake. So we need to now perform an aileron booster check. We're going to turn this off. And see what well, we can't really see well, but we'll have the ground crew tell us if okay. We know it's moving, and we're going to reactivate the booster system, stabilizer control. Okay. So horizontal stabilizer are, are okay. Now we're going to check the ARU system, which is located here behind the lamp. And we're going to check our elevators. Okay, seems to be okay. Let's reactivate this ARU system. There we go. This is also uses this lamp to inform us when the uh, trimmer is in the neutral position. The trim tabs. So let's move the aileron trim tab. It's that little thing on the joystick where. Okay. Okay, it's fine now. Now it's neutral. All right. 
Yeah, so everything seems to be in order. The flaps require a check. Let's uh, cycle them down to landing position and ask the ground crew to, to, to talk to us about the state of the human. Okay, they seem to be in order. Let's reset them and finally go back to takeoff position. Final preparation, the canopy is closed. It's locked and pressurized. I've already done that. Preparation the, of the armament system, I've already done that. So we're going to request taxi at this point. So before I request taxi, actually a bit about the flight, we're going to be flying with the help of the stopwatch and basically a more classic style navigation. So I've already kind of formulated the flight plan. So we're going to try to climb about 550 kilometers an hour. We might not use military power. So we're going to lose, lose use apologies runway seven for takeoff. We're going to fly on 069 for about until we reach a thousand meters altitude, so about 3000 feet. Then we're going to turn on heading 254 and we're going to fly to the coast for about a minute and 20 seconds. We're actually going to be going to be using the onboard stopwatch. And finally, we're going to be turning south to the following waypoint and we established an, uh, a cruising altitude of about five and a half thousand meters. So we're going to climb extremely fast and we're going to be using about 750 kilometers an hour. And then we're going to be flying a series of waypoints, which I have written here on my little paper flight plan. Uh, I've converted everything to kilometers an hour, so we should be ready to go. So I'm going to request taxi from the tower, AC, cop copy lady, and request taxi to runway. Okay, we've been cleared to runway 7. Usually Copoletti uses uh, runway 7 as active. I think the ILS locally is also for runway 7, if it's not for the twin runway 25. So again, as I was mentioning yesterday, this plane uses um, differential braking. So we're going to increase power. It has no parking brake. So... We're going to leave it about 9,000 RPM. It's going to start moving soon. Oh, there we go. I'm going to cut the power a bit. It wants to go really fast, even on the ground. So I need to constantly keep it under control. There we go. See, it wants to go. It, it wants to accelerate really quickly. Oh, hey, water drop, how's it going? Oh, uh, I don't know what you're referring to. I'm just here, you know, looking for cows. People have stolen my cows, and since I'm a farmer pilot, I have to go look for them.
So. Oh, that's a. I wasn't really careful. Unable to clear takeoff. Of course, you're not able to clear takeoff. Okay, I think we are ready to take off. Our wingman is holding short of the runway, so I think we can go. Okay, as soon as I lift off the ground, I'm going to be starting the stopwatch. So the first step was 1 minute 20 seconds for after we turn heading 254 and reach 1000 meters of altitude. So we're going to hold the brakes, push the engines forward, not to full power, we're not going to go full, min full military power here. And there we go, 9000 RPM. And I'm going to let go of the brakes. Bit of a gentle back, back, backward stick, and it will just take itself off the ground. It's really that easy to take off. Uh, let's get our gear up. I'm going to reset the flaps and let's try climbing. Four hundred meters. Now well, let's try to do our turn here. I'm sorry, I had to take my glasses off. That was a bit rough because I sometimes they actually hurt my eyes if I use them with the computer. They're not for actual computer use. They're for um, um, long distance. So. Going to turn here on two five four. That should be about right. I'm gonna try to reduce climbing climbing altitude, uh, climbing speed. Sorry. So we're at 1,000 meters. And here we need to turn to heading 193. For three minutes, no, excuse me, for 
2 minutes 53 seconds. So heading 1, 9, or 3. Should be about right. So we need to fly this for about maybe two, almost two minutes. I'm also going to try to use some visual references, but... Uh, sorry, I had to adjust my position a bit. Two thousand three hundred meters. Still maintaining one nine three. Our wingman is well, there's Ivan. So, water drop, what are you doing? I haven't seen you in forever. Or how are you doing? That's a better question. Trying to check my visual references, and I think we are at about the right place. Yeah, we are, and we're going to come about to heading 220 for about 2 minutes and two, actually for 2 minutes 52 seconds. It's a bit hard to operate also the stopwatch. I would have probably have to do something like this. So come on guys, don't leave me talking to myself. How are you all doing?
Okay, there we go. We're about two to actually we're about two seven zero. I wasn't paying attention and now we actually have some navigational drift. Yeah, we're about 5,000 meters, so I think we can stay up here. Uh, we will be ter entering Turkish airspace, so... And you can see the vapor trails there. Still no sign of the cows. I mean, we came up here, and I think it's about time we turn to heading 342. Let's And I think it's about time we turn and head back north. This was a, it's supposed to be a very short flight anyway. And we don't really want to climb that much. Again, this is a very slow turn at 5,000 meters, so... I love the vapor trails, however, it's really awesome. Take a look at that, that's, that's amazing. And hello viewer, how are you doing? How are you doing this wonderful Saturday night? Have you come to watch me look for my cows? Goddamn Turks, they stole my cows. Again, my stream has no political affiliation. If I make jokes that seem racist, feel free to let me know and I will try to refrain from them. I have actually nothing against the na great nation of Turkey and its people. It is simply a joke.
Uh, we're maintaining flight at about 5,500 meters, so let's descend a little bit. And we're gonna fly like this for maybe a couple of more minutes. So yeah, it's about actually not a couple of more minutes, about 30 more seconds. Then we're going to turn to 030 or 029, actually, as it's on my flight plan. And 30 seconds. We're going to reset. And. Turn. And we're also starting our descent as well. So let's try to keep her a bit more slower descent. We're going to turn to 030 and we're gonna head out. Altitude is about 5000 meters but we, we are descending slowly because we wish to return back to our airbase. And there we go, 360 degrees. We need to fly this heading for about four minutes. There we go, zero three zero. Let's level her off. Hello, viewer. How's it going? Welcome aboard the MiG nineteen P by Raspan Simulations. There we go, there we go, okay, we're a bit off course, and our ADF is tuned, but I'm not exactly sure how it's working yet. So we want to fly 030, I guess, this is the heading we want to fly, and we are descending about 20 meters per second. And we are doing about 650 kilometers an hour. And I apologize, guys, if you find my stream not very exciting, but, well, it is what it is. I'm simply trying to learn the plane, and I'm actually happy if you're along with me to learn as well. Or, you know, uh, you can always be my backseat pilot. I'm always happy to have backseat pilots. Now, this plane has actually very easy... Uh, roll tendency, so it turns very easily. Now I know Kobuleri is somewhere that way, so I guess we need to turn and see if we can actually get our our way to the ADF. But I, again, I do not know exactly how it's working yet on on the MiG-19. So let's try to uh, enter a holding pattern over the runway or before the runway. Let's try to perform a spiral descent slowly so we can actually start heading back to base.
Now, fuel is not a problem because we have a bucket load of fuel aboard. This was actually a very short hop. I think about maybe 20, 30 kilometers. Well, actually a bit more than that, close to 200 kilometers, but that's next to nothing for this plane, so. Also, have you guys managed to discover how the ADF works? I know it works, I haven't read the manual truly. I admit, I usually learn more by doing than by reading. Uh, I'm a more practical learner, so if you tell me how to do it, I will learn how to do it correctly, but reading, well, sometimes is a bit much. I apologize if my descent is taking forever. I don't really have an approach uh, chart for this airfield, so I'm just flying it by... Well, I'm kind of winging it, literally. See? I have a wing.